welcome back. We are weighing in today about how to be a little less processed, a little bit more clean, a little bit more whole foods ish. There's a lot of terms and they can be confusing. So we're going to talk about it today in our weigh in segment. First off, we have Brittany Gibbons, who is a lifelong learner like myself about yes. these things, right? I Always mean, learning. I yeah. was not raised with the health food mantra or clean eating mantra. I don't know about you. No. I mean, Cheese its and a Coke, breakfast, go to school. You're good. Still today. <laughs> okay. It's my go-to breakfast. <laughs> Which is tasty. Uh, so to give us, she's uh, the founder of Curvy Girl Guide and BarefootFoodie.com. Yes. Um, and to give us a little bit, you, we're going to quiz you today, Claudia. You're going to help us start the process of being a little bit cleaner about what we eat. Wonderful. Claudia Thank David you. Roscoe, long time. You said 38 years in the health food industry yes. or profession. But yes. you... You, unlike us, were always raised in a household that valued those ingredients and, and what was in them. Yes, I was very blessed that my mother was very aware. She had a beautiful understanding that what we eat is important to value it, uh, to understand the connection between how it's grown, how it affects our body, and really the, the world around us. So I'm very blessed that she was there to do that for you? Back then, yes. Because 40 years ago, when you talk about health food stores, I mean, there's a certain, you know, for lack of a, a hippie kind yes. of, I live in the commune, and me and my four wives, and four husbands, and I mean, it, it's kind of a loosey-goosey, no offense to the loosey-goosey, but it's not like your typical health food stores have kind of that thought when you first started out. They do, but but also, and, and I was, I started working in a health food store when I was 16, so it's it's been many years, and even back then, there were, uh, there was the generation, what, well, the older generation, that were just caring people. They understood that food needed to be natural and how God gave it to us in the in the whole package. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't just the hippies hanging out in health food stores, <laughs> even though that's people. what a lot of people, you know, we've been called I quacks, hippie. hippies, whatever, I am too. But it is fair to say that there were many people back then that were of the older generation that were sticking to their roots. They but, grew up on farms, right, they were raised right. with clean food. But now you got suburbanites sort of with me and Brittany and most gals, you know, in the we're all thinking now about this for our kids. Our, what yeah. are we feeding our kids? I mean, I think we're in an era now where do you it's kind of in style. How are you different debate. than your mom, I guess, when it comes to what you feed your kid? Is well, there a difference? Well, one thing my mom did do was we always, um, and it must have just been sort of like a rural thing. <laughs> I grew up in a really rural area, so we did always get our meat from a farmer, from buying half or a quarter of a cow at a time. So that's something that I've continued to do. So we don't buy our meat from the grocery store. So um, you know what's in it. But, your yeah. slime is not, you're like, we that's got no slime. That's not an issue for me <laughs> that I know of. I've met the cows. They seem slimeless. So, <laughs> but we're in also in Ohio, so like, yeah. Vegetables and, and whatnot. That's not something we can get fresh here year round. So right. that's kind of like one of my big. I've been starting to freeze you from the do. summer. It was the first. This is the first time I've done it, and I didn't freeze nearly enough. But but you started the process of, of growing did. and freezing. Um, like purchasing it from our local okay. farmers market mm -hmm. in my town, um, and then blanching and freezing and. Beautiful. I googled it. That's you googled the way to it. Do it. Mm -hmm. That's awesome, right? What's the? I would say I'm also leaning into this. That's a, a phrase that you know is out there now. Instead of yeah. going 100% in one direction, you talk about it too. You kind of lean into it. Like, what choice can I make a little bit better? I mean, have you switched yeah. some things out in your kids' diet? Only small, small things. Mm -hmm. Just because. I mean, it seems like every day something else new is new information is coming out. So I feel like if I go too far into one side, then I'm going to end up looking like an idiot when right. it comes out and. It's the just me. So, right. so, but the meat and vegetable part, um, I did run out of frozen vegetables, so now we're back to what I could get at the store. But, yeah. Well, that's like, not, that's a change. It's not incredibly hard. So that's the thing. We get over, what did you think about those? You, when the pink slime story came out, you were like, yeah, duh, I've known that for 40 years. <laughs> well, um, it, yes, and, and even though other companies are saying they're not using pink slime, it is fair to say that there are other things in the meat that just has not come out in the media yet that most people really probably don't want their children to be eating mm -hmm. that may not be pink slime. I mean, it's the way the cows are being raised. It's the way the, the cows and the chickens are being raised. That's what the mega farms mm -hmm. are. And that's why so many people have been outraged with mega farms and the way those animals are being raised in filth and no sunlight and no fresh air. They're locked up in, you know, enclosed barns. And, and it's just not natural. So they're sickly and ultimately it's contaminating the ground water, the environment. But I will say this, in, 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 in 
for people to learn how to go from a commercial kitchen to making more natural choices. We always teach people, keep it simple. It is a journey. Everyone has been taught what people think about the American diet. They have been taught that through the media. Those were good media, those were good campaigns, mm -hmm. companies selling their product. Right, because I it's, like Captain Crunch, right? I mean, big time. I'm not giving that one up. Oh. So, <laughs> it's not been based on truth necessarily. I don't smoke, I don't, well, I sometimes drink, <laughs> but I'm not giving up Captain Crunch. Well, but you might find a nice alternative to Captain Crunch that's made with an organic grain and not genetically modified. Okay. So we teach people, take it in baby steps, it's a journey, everyone is relearning. They're mm -hmm. rethinking. Take it slowly because if you try to do it overnight, it's totally emotionally first overwhelming. People like freak out because all the foods they've been raised with, like Captain Crunch, they're like, oh my God, I can't eat Captain Crunch. Well, there's so many cool cereals on the market that are clean. Mm -hmm. You know, they're they're, they're better choices. They're better choices. So you had a question, yeah, um, I also think. I know a lot of times, especially when you go on a diet or you try yeah. to eat more organic, you think, oh my gosh, this is so expensive. Because it is, going to the store becomes like really, really expensive. But I also found too that it's actually, I found ordering half a cow or a quarter of a cow and freezing my vegetables, it's so cheap compared to what I would spend at a grocery yes. store. Yes, and I'm glad you're saying that because... It's a planning thing though too. Right, I bought a dozen years of, I bought a dozen years of corn for $3 from my farmer's market and I got bags and bags and bags of frozen right. corn as opposed to buying one $3 frozen steam mm -hmm. in the bag thing at a grocery store. So it's, it's so much cheaper. If you think ahead like that. Well, and but plans. also, but think about this. Being sick will always be expensive. Being sick is expensive. Yeah. We're seeing it all over the United States. People are coming in and telling us how much they're spending on all their scripts and they can't afford their you know, health insurance, all these things. When you look at the whole picture, the American p public has been taught not to value their food supply, devalue it, put it on the bottom of the ladder and, and prioritize everything else, whether it's whatever. You probably don't, you know, I don't get my hair done, which, uh, you know, but a lot of people are prioritizing their nails, That's their hair, their cars, girl. their, yeah. but, but, you, but, but and, and it's not that prioritize, it's not that other things aren't wonderful to have in life, but at the cost of good health, mm -hmm. we have to teach people, put your money first into wonderful God-given natural food on your kitchen table for your loved ones, then. The it changes thing. the whole way we... What's the worst thing we do, though? What is the worst thing? I mean, Brittany and I think she's better than me. I don't get the half a cow thing. I, I buy at my local butcher. But So what is, though, the typical mess-up that most of well, us... The, you, if you could just shake us, just do this one you know, thing. It's, it, there's, there's so many one things. So <laughs> this is where I always start. Because yeah. this is a conversation we have daily at the store a hundred times over. Mm -hmm. If you if you have mar margarine on your table, get rid of it and put butter. I've Why done that. Butter? Yeah. All right, that's butter. Woohoo! That's the first <laughs> step. And again, going back to my mother's great wisdom, uh -huh. she raised my brothers and I. She always said, when you look at a food, you ask yourself, did God and nature put it here, or was it made in a factory? That will always be the deciding factor. So, so I'm processed is your check off first. How much processing went into this item? And like I'm doing a low carb right now, mm -hmm. and I found that. I'm reading way more labels, which is great. I should have been doing that anyways. But um, there are more carbs in the more processed things. So I'm naturally staying away from those things because yes. they're higher in carb. There's more process to it, and they have more carbs. Whole fat, natural things have less carbs, which is right. Well, because because refined because carbs thinking. have more sugar. Right. So it's all adding up. So right. eat real butter. Eat real fats and oils, palm oil, olive oil, coconut oil, uh, all the ones that everybody has been told over the years, they're dangerous, they're bad, eat margarine. It's, the flip is true because real fats are wonderful for the human body. They're necessary for the human body and they raise healthy children. Mm -hmm. So it's the man-made. So w if somebody has already have mar uh, butter on their table, which is wonderful, now you start reading labels and looking for the word hydrogenated. Okay. Because most people, if they go in their kitchen right now, most of what's in their cabinets is hydrogenated. They just don't know it. Well, so, so, but then that's the question, too. I think that people are confused by, and certainly I do food shows for a living here, and it can be confusing. There's clean, there's organic, there's whole, there's... Yes. You know, 
what the what yeah it is confusing and and i think it also is fair to say as the public is now as the awareness is coming to the surface and people want to learn they want to really learn rethink how they eat what they feed their family the big the big companies all want to get a piece of the financial pie so they're now messing with the labels and that's really what's happening so that they aren't really instructive of what's in there but it, they are kind of it's more profit to, based yeah. than than philosophy and that's why i always encourage people stick to the stick to the stores stick to the the small family owned companies that what that what we do is our life we're just not here just because we we believe in what we do we live what we do mm-hmm. and and so when you seek out small family farms that are raising clean mm-hmm. meat or you're shopping at uh, family owned companies that have been in the industry for years there's health food stores all over the united states that have been sending this message for years they have the heart and it's the people that have the heart that are actually protecting the integrity of the organic label mm-hmm. so that it means something that when you so see that, that label you know something. what it because says because if we leave it up to mass market they're going to call everything natural and organic and none of it will be mm-hmm. do you find when you you have classes at your store yes because i do think it's something you have to learn if you weren't raised to eat this way right. or to to i mean you feel like do i need it's a, a diet process. it's a process absolutely um so what are what's the first step you know you talked about the butter but if you if you want to not over i mean it's the classic case of january 1st i get insanity uh dvd <laughs> and i'm going to work out 90 minutes a day for 7 days a week <laughs> and then day 2 i can't do it anymore and that's the case with this like i'll get on a kick like oh i've got to clean out everything <laughs> and we're not having this anymore and we're not having it. i mean that's really not the way to start because you got to do a little at a time. When you I always say to people, get it in your heart. Mm-hmm. Understand the importance and the value of eating real food. When it's in your heart, it changes the whole scope of how then you approach it and bring it into your life. It's it, it once somebody is learning to eat god-given natural fats and get rid of the man-made hydrogenated which are everywhere. Mm-hmm. The next thing is then we look at the sweeteners. Right. Get rid of the the artificial sweeteners What's and there's many of them. What's your favorite sweeteners then? That's a good question. Why well, you're here with us. Well, that's a whole discussion. I get away from diet Pepsi. It's I sort of my I'm crutch. It's my crutch. It but, is your but, crutch. But I know, it's, I get you. It's it's a really important thing and it's to my do. Thing. I know. Well, you know what though? It's this really is a process. It's addictive by the way. Just so you know that. It's extremely oh, I'm really addictive. addictive. It's it's very addictive. It's my crack. I'm good with that. No, I'm the same. I have I don't drink diet Coke. I drink diet right with Splenda. Now here now wait a minute. I know. Now, wait a minute. I'm just going to throw this out yeah. there and it's not necessarily what we want to talk about now cuz that could yeah. be a whole new Yeah, we're not discussion. Go, yeah, but I do want to say can, one of the other things that we teach people, okay guys, it's our money that's fueling the companies mm-hmm. that are affecting the world we live in. Mm-hmm. So, so you, you care about with your dollars. Yeah, absolutely. You fuel those the companies. greatest vote we have as a consumer is what company do we want to give our money to? And when you look at a lot of the companies that are making a lot of the artificial things that at the end of the day are really harming people, those are some of the companies that are just to- playing total havoc in the world. So real quick though, what is your favorite sweetener? Just out of curiosity cuz I like me some Well, and I'm not a sh- we're, we're, I'm not a sugar I don't have a sweet tooth. However, if we do some kind of sweetener yeah. uh raw unpasteurized honey we saw a lot okay. of it at the store agave which we're going to awesome we're going to cook with that we've got agave which is cactus sweetener There's stevia a is a yeah. wonderful wonderful yeah. stevia stevia it's the at to date it's the only known plant uh, that we know of that does not trigger the insulin response excellent so it, all right i'm going to cut you off we're going to be in the kitchen okay. in a minute we'll talk more about it you're going to show Brittany and i how to make some of these yes, smoothies yes we're going to start with a pro If it's okay, we're going to Hey, we're going to do whatever you want. We're going to do it. It's just going to blend it all up. Brett and Brittany are like, daiquiris? No, not daiquiris. <laughs> we're having protein shakes. Stay with us. Yeah.